Well, University of the Arts London, as they now are, and London College of Communication has been there 50 years, I think, and are very well established in the local area, the local community. They wanted to stay in the local area, but obviously their existing campus, they do great things with it, but actually the, the property and the buildings are holding them back. The, the really big wins come when you can get a really strong, critical mass of staff and students in buildings that are very permeable, really, to the community and acting as a magnet for the community. What community? What community are they going to engage with? That shopping centre is the community. So when you're taking it away, what will be left? A place where we would go to meet the community. You're pushing them all out. You're saying, we don't give a fuck about you. Uh, and, then, and then in the same breath, you're saying that you want to have a relationship with the community. A bit contradictory in my eyes. It's sad because it just hurts. There's an element to which it provided this kind of um, liberal veneer on the whole thing, you know. Mm. This wasn't big, bad, Virgin Island-based um, Delancey. This was big, bad, Virgin Island-based Delancey in partnership with a liberal art university where you've got, like, students who are doing quite radical stuff sometimes and it all feels very nice. Um, it changes the the aesthetic of it, doesn't mm, it? Mm. And it makes it look Perception better. Perception is completely yeah. different. According to UAL, they have a strong position on social justice, and part of this is social housing. Um, they wrote that after the planning committee rejected their proposals back in January, when Delancey were only offering 33 social houses out of 979 and they were fully on board at that point, and so... And if this is true, how can UAL be involved with all of this? How can they be in a partnership with these guys? And post things like this? Because, you see, in 2011, UAL's partners Delancey bought the Athletes' Village built for the London Olympics to turn into luxury apartments they could rent out through a different company that they own. With an ambition really to deliver them into ideally a long-term rental tenure, as we are already at the Olympic Park in Stratford at East Village, we're very happy with the product we've delivered through Get Living London, which is essentially a... Get Living already manages and rents out the flats part of Elephant One. But Jamie and Stafford and Richard aren't doing it alone because Get Living is a company Delancey set up in strong, firm partnership. Now man is forming the future skyline of Qatar by building cities that will rise from the sand and combine contemporary luxury with traditional values. Qatari DR, the art of real estate. Qatari DR, the property investment arm of the Qatari government, part of the Qatari Investment Authority, a state-owned fund that invests globally to strengthen the country's economy. They own assets worth 35 billion. On the website, they have a direct link just selling how good Qatar is as a place. They're London's largest property owner, including the Shard. Isn't it funny? The same people who make vans like this and signs like this seem so eager to sell off our country piece by piece to foreign authoritarian regimes. It's almost like they distinguish between rich foreigners who'll benefit them and poor families fleeing wars they started. It's almost like they want us to fight each other. So we'll just leave them the fuck alone. The Qatari Investment Authority also owned Miramax for a while, Harvey Weinstein's film studio. So, you know. They only keep good company. Now, obviously they avoid paying tax like every other developer, but that's like the least bad thing about them. 
Qatari DR is set up entirely to make money for Qatar's government. For us, it's truly shocking that a human rights abusing regime like Qatar should have any role and profit in any way from the redevelopment of this area. Qatar has a very bad human rights record. It is not a democracy. As we've seen with the construction of the facilities for the 2022 World Cup, migrant workers have been very badly treated. Many, many have died. Um, they're virtual prisoners in Qatar. Homosexual behaviour is illegal in Qatar and remains one of the 10 countries in the world where it's punishable by death. They were even considering a test to detect if you were gay before you could enter the country. Damn, you just show me a picture of Timothy Sh- We're very happy with the product we've delivered through Get Living London, which is essentially a- Delancey and Qatari DR's company, Get Living, will let the new homes built on the site of the shopping centre and on the site of the current UAL building. So how does UAL justify teaming up specifically with Delancey, whose closest partner is these people? By entering into this partnership, we're supporting them. What the fuck would the Qatari DR board think of our Chancellor, Grayson Perry? Because the truth is, you can tweet as many rainbows as you like. But if you support a company whose sole purpose is to make money for a regime that institutionally murders gay people, it's gonna feel a little fake. I know, I just love Timmy and Clara. Who's that? Delancey using UAL as their liberal face, their hashtag diversity, is unsurprising. It's what UAL are experts at, being a liberal face. Their heart, though, not so different. They were proud of protest when one of their alumni led it against the nasty orange man. But not so happy when Sahaya led the student wing of the campaign against their involvement in the regeneration. Culminating in protesting at a UAL degree show. This is about student shorts. Right, you're ruining students' degree show with their friends and family here. How do you feel? You're a student? Yeah, great. So would you like this if you've paid three years of money and they're here with their friends and family to show what they've done in three years? You've ruined that. Well done you. You've ruined that as a student. I'm sure all the fellow students of UAL will be really happy to see what you've done. UAL love the surface appearance of students being political. The university strongly supports freedom of speech, freedom of expression, and a peaceful assembly of its students on university property. But their fine print tells a different story. University buildings are private property and occupations are not generally acceptable. Planned protests and occupations which do not adversely affect the business of the university may, at the discretion of the university, be permitted with advance warning. Open to occupations, open to protests, uh, but as long as you, know, you get permission and you're not causing any disruption. What this is in effect saying um, is, you know, if you contact the university, hey, like, I don't really like what you're up to, but like, you know, I want to use my freedom of expression, uh, can I have a nice, suitable place that'll be safe for me, it'll be safe for others, and importantly, it's not going to, like, cause any interference or, like, God forbid, disruption. Um, and they'll, like, hook you up with a nice little room, our site, 
no one sees you. Um, it's supposed to like room booking, and that's what they're offering. And those are the conditions under which UIL support um, freedom of expression, freedom of speech, and uh, the right to protest. That's awful. How dare you? It's awful that you've done that. Disrespectful and rude. In the first section of this essay, I like to call interviewing attractive art students about what they think of protesting at degree shows. I will prove my theory that this man is wrong. I'm sure all the fellow students of UAL will be really happy to see what you've done. Imagine what happened at the degree show at LCC happened to our degree show, like would you have minded? Not really, I mean, it's for a good cause. Art is a place for things to go wrong and like, for people to make statements and uh, you know, like, it's not for your degree show to be perfect. I'd be like, fuck yeah, that's cool. You can sit on the floor near my work, I don't mind. Would you have minded if they would have protested it like our degree show? Uh, no. Nah. If you've got something that you want to, like, bring to the public, then yeah, sure, like, speak about it. Mm. It would definitely get more awareness. Like, I'd admit, I definitely didn't, like, know much about it at all. I think it definitely raised awareness. That's how I personally found out about the whole issue. Life comes before I not art, not life. I mean, and it's an issue of life. If it's affecting other people, li other people's lives, whether a degree show is just a degree show. Disrespectful and rude. I can only shake my head at UAL. A lot of people have drawn attention to the fact that uh, while they seem to be interested in critiques, as they say, every generation elsewhere, they're not quite so interested in critiquing criticising the regeneration that they're so intimately involved with. I was really, really, really shocked when we decided to protest at, um, there was an exhibition here which, funnily enough, was on gentrification. What do we want? Social housing! What do we want? Now! The conversations, the reactions from higher members of staff, their responses to me specifically um, I remember trying to hand out a leaflet and then turning their back and being like, no, we don't want it. And when I tried to engage in conversation about why we were doing this, um, I was completely dismissed. And to have that kind of response from people who pride themselves on um, advocating for students and communities, it made me feel ashamed to be part of a university um, that does this and treats their students that way. Who didn't want to listen? Who are the people making the decisions? Who are UAL? It all goes back and back to them London 2012 Olympics. The Olympic Delivery Authority, a government organisation responsible for ensuring the transformation of the Olympic Athletes Village into East Village, for them to decide which property developer turned it into houses and flats. And you remember which developer won that bid and now owns East Village? As we are already at the Olympic Park in Stratford, at East Village. The thing is, out of everyone in the world, two of the seven people that were board members of the organisation that made the decision to sell it to Delancey also happen to be two of UAL's governors. One of them's been in property for over 40 years. In 1997, she even proudly sat as the president of the British Property Federation, a position held the next year by the future chairman of Get Living. And 10 years later, by Nicholas Riplat, Jamie's brother. UAL's pro-vice-chancellor Nigel Carrington was a governor of the International Students' House at Ritzy Halls in Regent's Park. Alongside John Riplat. The Ripblats are education mad. UCL's building in Here East? A Delancey project. The former head of estates for King's College London. Jamie Ripblatt. 
As a student officer, Anita meets UAL's leadership regularly to discuss university issues. Being in a position where I can actually address the people that make these decisions and hearing what they have to say, they're clearly so far removed from the issue that um, it, it actually disgusts me a little bit and I don't like to use that word a lot, I don't use it lightly, but it does disgust me. Many people that I sit in these committees and the governor's board with are of a certain age um, this is no disrespect because obviously they are experienced, but they're not experienced in what's going on now. Their experiences are completely different to the experiences of the average student um, or of the average person in, in a community of Southern. Mostly people from BME backgrounds and migrant backgrounds um, who have had to struggle all their lives um, to put food on the table or to make opportunities happen for their family. These people don't understand that. They don't understand struggle. There is a sense that there are some people there who really do want to understand and do want to help but the people who make the decisions um, themselves they have no idea so put your tin hat away i'm not saying ual's leadership and delancey struck a shady deal in a smoke-filled room or even that governors have a huge amount of say over what happens i think something sad is true at the heart of it the reason they don't have a moral problem with being part of the regeneration, those at the top of UAL just have more in common with the developers than any of the community. Disrespectful and rude. There's a real disconnect, let alone between um, us and the community, but the students and the institution themselves. In their eyes, it's already a done deal. You know what I mean? It's already a done deal. In their eyes, this is happening whether you like it or not. So even if they did speak to the students, nothing would happen because um, as far as they're concerned, this is happening. Radio silence doesn't even begin to describe the fucking lack of consultation UAL have held with its students on what they want to do in Elephant and why. The campus in Elephant is called the London College of Communication, after all. In the second section of this essay I like to call Interviewing Attractive Art Students About What They Think of UAL's Involvement in the Regeneration Part 1, I will prove my theory. Hey, Hannah, what do you think about what's happening in Elephant and Castle? I don't know, I really don't know. Uh, if you knew anything, um, what you thought about what UAL are doing at Elephant and Castle. I have no idea. I don't even know what they're doing at Elephant and Castle. That's, <laughs> that's cool. Wrong. No, that's such a good answer. I like it. Is it? What do you think about what UAL are doing in Elephant and Castle? <laughs> no. I emailed every one of UAL's executive board. Just one of them agreed to chat. I geared up for war. I was ready for the argument of my life. It is quite amazing that built into the into planning legislation is the right of developers to make a fixed profit. Yeah. It's quite incredible. I think Haygate is is really problematic, the, the social cleansing at Haygate, the mm. way that lend lease were allowed to kind of just get rid of council tenants. And there was something really special about a kind of shopping which is not just a retail experience but actually is to do with engagement with, with the with the retailers in a in a more human manner. Yeah. And I yeah, I despair that that's gonna be homogenized and wiped out. Where we can we should use our agency in yeah. terms of 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 influence, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and particularly if we were making public statements about ethics. Yeah. Have the staff been sitting around watching this series? So how can you know all of this and still want to be part of it? I mean, the question is, should UAL be involved at all? Yeah, yeah, I get because it sounds like you completely agree with me. <laughs> In every way, like all of these well, I do, I do. like... I, do, I mean, I do and I don't agree. In a position like mine, I'm always conflicted. I completely accept that. Yeah. I'm conflicted between a personal ethic mm. and a very public, powerful, institutional role. Maybe the thing to do is start at the beginning, okay? 
Why, yeah. why LCC needs a new building? The tower block in particular was built in the 60s is completely not fit for purpose. Hmm. That with the kind of development of higher education we need new facilities. You can't refurbish those existing ones because to refurbish them would mean five years of building work for 4,000 students. The building does seem to have its issues and seems to be built for a, a different, different time with different yeah. technological needs. I've been here for almost as long as I was, I've been here. It used to be the London College of Printing. It's a good thing for us to have a university in the area. It provides jobs, it provides prestige to some extent, it provides opportunities for education and training for local people. We've always made it clear that we never want, we don't want them to leave. Universities are not properly funded at the moment. They aren't in a position where they can just produce the huge amount of cash that they would need to do a redevelopment on their own. Inevitably, for a project of that size, you are going to be working in one way or another with developers because site land values are so high that we don't we can't just go and buy land right. Yeah? right so you have to do in this case it was a land swap you can have the existing site which is quite big because lcc sprawls and you can build housing on it and then you will get a prime site in the middle so it was a it was a sort of it was a deal i can see why um they entered down that path but i think that Everyone just needs to be clear that when you're doing these kind of deals with big, with big business, with big money, with big developers, you're doing a deal with the devil. You're not, it's not a partnership of equals. Mm. It's a partnership where you have to make, I think, quite big sacrifices to get what you want. Once you're over that and say, actually, we need to build new stuff, you are part of the great machine of, 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 of the London property market. Yeah. And yes, we do get embroiled in the use of us as cultural capital. Mm. I understand that. Mm. I think, and it, it, I, tell me, what, what does one do? How, how does one avoid, in any, if, you, as, if you are reconstructing oneself, how does one avoid any tag of gentrification? We uh, believe that a scheme of this nature, a scheme in the wider context of regeneration, regenerating the urban castle area, should be able to include us, as well as the University of the Arts and London College of Communication, should be able to include the traders, there must be, should be some way of managing that, and this scheme certainly doesn't do that. In your mind, was it that the development was sort of going to go ahead, whatever, and there was this chance to go, well, we may have to take a bit of a hit with our kind of, you know, with how we look, but it's... It's I, worth it in the well, I don't time. think I'm not sure that 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 judgment would even have come into our minds. Actually, right. I don't think I don't think that. I mean, the campaign against it was was way after the. I mean, the horse way out of the stable by then. You know, right. we, we were we were we were going. So I don't think that the 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 kind of sense of are we doing anything wrong here mm. would have come into it. Now, into, because because. How much leverage do we have? Well, I don't know is if, if we had pulled out, which is not on the cards, whether the whole thing would have collapsed. I, how, much, how much value have the developer got out of us? I don't know, if we hadn't been part of it, how much the development would have... how much we were part of the whole kind of argument to give it planning permission. Right, right. I wasn't at the meetings. If UAL weren't involved in this at all, would it have gone through? It, it depends what context would they, would they not be involved? Would they not be involved because the LCC was going to stay where it was? Would they not involved because it was leaving anyway? I don't really know. Let, let, um, let, let's say, for example, the, the campaign from UAL worked and we as students put enough pressure on them to say we don't want, we, this, is, this cannot be done in our name and UAL pulled out. OK, I think if that happened, it'd be very hard to go forward with it. If it is shown that even one half of the partnership who's putting forward the deal is no longer thinks it's acceptable, that would give a pretty good reason for people to vote against it, wouldn't it? Mm, mm. Um, yeah, I think that would be very, very powerful. Mm. Mm. There's no doubt that UAL are an integral part of the scheme. I think they're a little shy in admitting it but they're supplying the land for half the scheme in exchange for their campus. And the scheme as it is could not go ahead without their active cooperation. And that's evidenced by the fact that they are a signatory to the, to the legal S106 agreement that secures uh, any planning approval 
their name is there in black and white. The reason why the original draft, which was like, like horrifying and wasn't even like compliant with the council's already like minimal, minimal requirements, was and this was explicitly the case because UAL were involved. Like university is a not-for-profit organisation. They bring all these benefits to the community and students. That's good. The involvement of university means we are like going to overlook the fact it doesn't even meet our like requirements in social housing. So yeah, they are like the reason why the plan was able to go ahead or like even be heard in that stage. They cannot um, uh, escape any responsibility really for the regeneration effects, good or real. Delancey will continue to buy these areas of land where they may be pillars of the community, like community, like the um, Elephant and Castle Shopping Centre. It's inevitable. So do I think that the deal would um, still happen? That's not for me to say, but what I do know is that UAL should have no parts of the deal. UAL shouldn't be jumping into bed with a, a tax avoiding company like Delancey, because what kind of example does that set to their student, to their staff? It just says they don't really give a fuck. Everyone needs to become fully aware of the situation and then together, you know, react to that and, you know, show UAL how much people actually care about that issue. There's more of us than there is of them. So if, if everyone says something about it, then yeah. that's who get the message right now. And, UAL, obviously, what's, what's UAL without its students, you know, it's here to serve us and if we disagree with something they're doing like that, then that, that voice should be heard and should be, you know, responded to. When you think you're just, like, joining an art school and it's great because at an art school you express your ideas, you disobey authority and you experiment, blah, 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 but actually, no, you're just um, a customer of a big corporate um, company that's fucking up, uh, I don't know, the, the real people that live in London, it's sad. Because on an, on an institutional level you kind of have to act differently, do you think um, you and people on the board will regret that in the future? Regret what's happened at LCC? Regret kind of being part of the whole regeneration. Well, as I say, you know, I, I don't think I don't think you can even talk about it in terms of regret. I mean, would I regret having a, a 1960s building that's not fit for purpose in 20 years' time? I'd regret that more in terms of what we're, what we're offering to our students, yeah. frankly. Interestingly, I don't feel as compromised as Sahara and others would, would think I should be in right. relation to my role or the, the role of the executive in this job. I think it is completely because of the... LCC's need for new buildings because of we're working in a in a very contested housing market which is outside our control. Well, I can't I can't change the financialisation of real estate in London, hmm. nor can the university. They know it's not a good situation. They know it's kind of the wrong thing to do, but they're sort of swimming with the tide with the sort of things that are going on in London. People are saying that as if it kind of redeems what they're doing, but I feel like it adds. It's adding insult to injury, really. Exist in a university that's supposed to be about social inclusion and fostering progressive ideas, and then the other half of your mind is focused on pretty much destroying people's lives and communities. I don't think that's an exaggeration. Um, I think uh, it's disingenuous. The decision was taken that the need for a new campus was worth being involved in all of this, and history will judge UAL accordingly. It's a contested issue, etc, etc, etc. But what is absolutely inexplicable is their complete lack of any public statement and refusal to put any pressure on their business partners to sort out the situation when it was finally revealed what would happen to those forced to upend their lives for that sparkly new campus.